there's a model of membership organizations where you define the organization by people joining it in some sense, whether that's formalized or it's informal, but it's, it's a membership, right. versus people who act on behalf of a cause without a membership drive. And you can see it in something like environmental activism. Greece, Greenpeace is not primarily a membership organization. It's primarily a very small organization that stages media events. Some other environmental activism is based on much more of a membership model. And the field, actually, in some way, the field of all the environmental activists encompasses roles for each of these different things, but they're not the same. And uh, um, you know, the promotion of recycling in neighborhoods is not done by Greenpeace seizing a ship someplace. Right. And, and these are, are really different kinds of things, yeah. tactically. And just one quick uh, addendum to that. You know, I, I think the 20th century membership organization is going to die. So there will be membership organizations, but they're radically different. Yeah. And the thing that's interesting is that the way people affiliate today is different. So people, yeah, young people, are less inclined to form long-term, kind of semi-permanent affiliations to organizations. They prefer to be somewhat more fluid. They'll have many more affiliations, but those affiliations will tend to be thinner. And that affects the way you construct a membership organization. Yeah. So yeah. it's not that I think they're going to completely die, but I think that um, the model that a Sierra Club or a, an Amnesty has used to construct membership is going to need to be radically revised. Sure. If I build on that, the, the, I agree with that. And I think that often membership is going to mean consistently being on a mailing list. But sometimes it's also going to mean things like local activity. And the yeah, question absolutely. is, how are these local activities, how is a group formed in a particular town related to something national yes, or international? Exactly. And a top-down structure that says local chapters are just agents of the central organization is probably dying or is at least in trouble, as I, I agree. But, um, but some way in which it's not just the central organization, which there's um, local initiative and local groups and local groups Affiliate in, yeah. in various ways, I think it's important. And I also, I can't resist as a historian sticking in the this is new in relationship to the dominant pattern of the post World War II era. Right. It's not all new. This is the way all those old encrusted organizations got started, right. after all. Trade unions weren't always old encrusted <laughs> organizations. They were a bunch of workers fighting um, in situations where they might get shot or locked out or lose their jobs, and with no organization and no legal standing for getting started, eventually they became more encrusted. Or you know, we have the AFL-CIO, and we forget that it used to be the AFL, the American Federation of Labor, was a pretty institutionalized encrusted organization, the CIO part, the Congress of industrial organizations was a multiplicity of other organizations that admitted blacks when the AFL organizations mm -hmm. didn't, that had immigrants, that had organized in industries like coal that weren't part of the AFL, and, and that you know eventually joined up, but that it started in the same sort of movement entrepreneur, lots of multiple different paths into mm -hmm. it.